Hey everyone, today, tutorial, Ferro Exchange. It's an AMM on the Avalanche blockchain. It is part of the Avalanche Foundation's boost program. So there are some great yields to be earned if you supply liquidity in their pools. I'm gonna do just that and show you how to use this protocol. First thing let's get started with is swaps. Just like every other AMM, you pick your asset, the asset you wanna swap into, and you click the swap button and you're done, you get the asset. The difference here is they have integrated these things called swap routers, which are basically other uh, entities that either specialize in liquidity to offer best prices to various aggregators and things like that. They've integrated it straight into the application. So if you are swapping between a particular pair, you can look at the price, as you can see with native routing, or it will show you the quotes of various aggregators that have this asset as well. So at the end of the day, you are getting the best price from a user perspective. Great, so that's swaps covered. Liquidity, Faro Exchange has concentrated liquidity, okay? This is to ensure that it can use the liquidity it has more efficiently and give some of the best prices thanks to the concentrated liquidity aspect. I'm gonna show you how this works, okay, on Faro Exchange. So here, when you click on liquidity, you can see all the various pools and you can see these sweet APRs for certain pools because they are boosted with various assets. So uh, if you supply liquidity, you will get uh, bonuses in terms of fees, whatever the LP earns and additional assets in the form of AVEX, staked AVEX, Faro tokens and some other stuff depending on the pools. To supply liquidity, you can do it in two ways. You can manually supply the liquidity into the LP you choose or some LPs will have an automation function. And you can see that by this little symbol next to the deposit button. Right now, I'm gonna show you how to do a normal deposit, and then I'm gonna show you how to use the automation function as well. So I'm gonna deposit some Arbex with BNUSD. Why? Because last tutorial, I covered the protocol that's called Balanced. It's also on Avalanche. And for users who want to learn about it, check out that video. But very quickly, I can take my Arbex, I can mint BNUSD with it at a low 2% interest rate, and I can then take my BNUSD and pair it with Arbex tokens in here to earn additional APRs, which at the moment on this pool with 55,000 in it, I could earn up to 1,500% APR. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to supply some liquidity here. You can see straight away, I don't have the automation function. So it is going to be something I do manually. I click on deposit. And now let me break down what you're seeing on this screen. First things first is the, these are the various range types. Uh, and you can, I'm just going to click on these. So you start getting an idea what these means. You'll see these figures changing. Now, in, simply put, when you supply liquidity, you're putting two assets into the pool. Um, because it's concentrated, if you see passive, it's got a wider range. So what this is telling me is if BNUSD, if Arbex were to fall below $16.57, uh, which BNUSD, you would end up basically all your Arbex would turn into BNUSD if it fell lower than that price. If your Arbex um, pair went, say, Avalanche just skyrocketed and went above $30, all your BNUSD would end up into Arbex tokens. And what would happen is if it fell out of these ratios, you would end up with that token and you would be out of range. So what that means is your liquidity would not be earning any more liquidity rewards or LP fees. So now that you've understood what the ranges are, let's again click on this and this will start to make more sense. You've got, you know, the lowest to the highest, lowest over here, it is a tighter 20 to 27. But one thing you'll start noticing over here, the APR, 98, uh, the tighter it gets, 198 further, so between $21 and 25 cents, um, I mean $21 and $25. And then if you get super aggressive, that APR keeps climbing. And if you have insane, which is basically, you know, 20 cents and everything I just explained, you can imagine if you want to tap into this APR, it's very hard or practically impossible because you're probably going to fall out of range with this least little bit of a fluctuation in price. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to say, okay, yep, 21, 84 to 25, 37. This is the range I want to keep my liquidity in. 
and you can see the current price at the moment is 23.65 so i have a very small um, wiggle room now crypto things are volatile so it, unless you're really watching this if you want to play it much safer then you would go and pick the wide range and go yep okay this looks good uh, i don't have to check it day to day unless there's a ridiculous fluctuation in the market but i'm going to bring it down and this tight uh pull it in a bit tighter Okay, what else are we looking at? So it tells you a bit of information about the pool, the various um, rewards that you're getting at the moment, thanks to the boost program. Let's add some liquidity. So over here, I'm going to add $100 uh, on this side. And you can see as well now, just backtracking, narrow, 100. But if I went wide, you'll see as well that uh, ratios change of how much of the certain asset is required on each side if you're putting it in. Um, so the the passive you'll notice yeah hundred dollars and three eighteen uh, more 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 aggressive more avex is needed per the hundred dollars so back to narrow and just before I do this like in this example I've had both pairs right I've had both sides of the asset to supply if I didn't they've got this handy little magic max here and if I were to turn this on basically and hit max what this is doing is basically taking the rvex token it, it's basically pairing what i had so if i didn't have bnusd it would then swap my rvex token into based on what side i've picked narrow into bnusd so that it can be supplied into the liquidity pool or vice versa so in this case i have both the assets so what it's doing is is taking the maximum between my rvex token and the bnusd in my wallet and then seeing what it needs to swap to get the ideal um, pair, the, the right allocations per pair so that I can supply it. But I just want to clarify what this was, a uh, handy feature to have. I've done a few other LPing where I've actually used that. But in this case, I have both sides of the LP, so I'm going to come back here. And I believe that's thoroughly covered. Here is, you know, this is basically your price points. If I, I didn't touch on this before, but if you wanted to, if you're a person that doesn't like figures and kind of wants to drag and drop, yeah, you can expand this out and expand that out. And you can see these prices have already fluctuated. So I'm going to bring this back um, to the narrow range so that I get my 405% because you see when I change that, it, it changes the APR. Great. I'm going to add some liquidity and i'm going to sign and ignore this sign confirm and you can see it automatically prompts you uh, to you know approve it and then supply the liquidity great now it's deposited the next thing it tells you you can go to the dashboard where you can see what you've supplied and manage your liquidity position. So let's let's take a look and do that. So here's a dashboard. I think just before we look at this dashboard, I want to supply a little more liquidity in a different pair. And uh, let's come back to the dashboard and then manage things accordingly. So I've showed you how to manually deposit and pick your ranges, but let's say I wanted to not worry about the ranges and if it's going to drop out of range. I just don't want all that stress, right? I just want to put it into the LP, earn an awesome APR, and it automatically adjusts the ranges based on what's happening in the market. That is where the automation comes in. So in this case, I'm going to do look at BTC. They've got this BTC.B and RVEX pair. You can see the APR is 250%, 38% of that's in fees, and then you got the rest of it in uh, various assets, part of the incentive program. This is the auto button. This is what it means to auto when I click on it. So here you can see if I went into the automation, my APR is lower, but I don't have to worry about it. Like, you know, I don't have to keep coming in and checking the ranges. So over here, changes. Now, this, this APR fluctuates as well based on fees and things that happen. Uh, if there's more volume, uh, that APR will naturally go higher. And here you can see I've got a bit of BTCB and AVAX. Okay, so I'm just going to supply one AVAX. And, and you, you can see in this case, it's ranged at very different. It's not half and half. Um, I hit the add liquidity. A whole bunch of stuff needs to happen. I'll sign, get through these transactions. Just keep an eye on uh, how much it's approving limits. It seems to have just been capping the unlimited, the highest limits possible, which is a bit ridiculous. So here's the dashboard. I've supplied two LPs, AVAX, BNUSD. I did it myself, as you saw. 
And this is what you're looking at, the APR at the moment based on what I've supplied. Now, I could go in and supply a new range. So I could supply to this existing LP where I want to add more than the $186 I've added here to the same range. So it will be part of this position. Or I can, to the same pair, pick a much more concentrated and supply, you know, whatever amount I want. And then it will just pop up as a different LP that I have to manage. Okay. So this is this. And over here is a quick bird's eye view to tell you yeah, where in the range that you've picked, where is your liquidity exactly right now I'm in the middle because that's where I've supplied it but tomorrow the price could change and uh, if Arvex has climbed in price you could see this move further up which is telling me that I'm getting close to the end of one of the ranges and the automatic positions this you don't do anything here it just gives you a good idea you can see uh, this is the APR which will fluctuate based on volume and it's staked and when, when I have rewards just like I do over here you can claim it on the dashboard as well you can see claim LP rewards and compound the fees you have earned. So one thing to be very clear is the compound button will only take the fees the LP has earned and put it back into the LP. It won't take these additional rewards up here, okay? Uh, the additional tokens you're getting. So that one, you would claim the LP rewards to get it in your wallet. It's that simple. Finally, just very quickly, this these protocols, Faro is what's known as a VE33. The goal there is uh, you can uh, take the native token, you stake it over a period of time, whether it be one, two, three, four years, you get a VE token back, which is kind of locked, and then you can use it to uh, vote on emissions and things like that, and you get rewarded for doing such things. I'm not going to dive too deep into the tokenomics, but the docs of the protocol is really well written for you to learn a bit about the native token. But this is a way that the user who earns these tokens can go and stake and actually start having a say in where they want to see emissions, what pools um, should get more emissions and things like that. So definitely um, explore it if, if you want to dive down the tokenomics of it. Uh, but that's a quick overview. There's also a stats page where you can see how the protocol is performing, various pairs, TVL, which is fantastic. Again, something for you to mull over and go through. But it's a good idea to gauge which pairs are uh, having a lot of volume because that's probably got a good APR and where you want to kind of concentrate your liquidity and, and earn bang for your buck. And that's it. That's Ferro Exchange in a nutshell. Thank you everyone for watching, not financial advice. Remember, these are strictly for uh, educational purposes only. Like, share, subscribe, and if you want me to cover any other content, let me know. Take care.